A very good evening everybody and welcome to our Celtic Spirituality Reflection as if from St Michael at Northgate Church in Oxford. As you can tell we're not in the church building at the moment. That's because this week we are pre-recording the reflection because at six o'clock there will be a service at Christchurch Cathedral and we weren't quite sure we could do both uh, within the time frame. You are very welcome as you watch this wherever and whenever you may be watching. You're also very welcome to join the Christchurch service, which I think is on their YouTube channel and also on Radio Oxford. And so we open with our familiar words, reminding us, our, reminding us of the great tradition of the enfolding love of God. We travel together, mindful of the enfolding love of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. A prayer of St Columba. Alone with none but thee, my God, I journey on my way. What need I fear when thou art near, O King of night and day? More safe am I within thy hand than if a host, than if a host did round me stand. Circle me, Lord, keep protection near and danger afar. Circle me, Lord, keep hope within, keep doubt without. Circle me, Lord, keep light near and darkness afar. Circle me, Lord, keep peace within, keep evil out. Words of the Creed is often used on the Isle of Iona. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, he died alone and forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb, he ascended into heaven, to be everywhere present throughout all ages and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit burning with Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of all resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. Psalm 23, words that have brought comfort and hope to so many people over thousands of years. In our time of national mourning, these words are good to bring to mind. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A brief thought, if I may. I once heard a speaker recount the anecdote of how another preacher was trying to teach this psalm to an illiterate child. And uh, the preacher concentrated on the first phrase and because the child could not read, suggested that the child just used his fingers and the Lord is my shepherd and ask the child to do it and to remember it. The Lord is my shepherd. And then said to the child, whenever you want to focus on a particular part of that phrase, then just hold that particular finger and that will remind you. So if we need reminding that our God is a wonderful shepherd to us, then that's the fifth finger. If it's the fact that he is my shepherd, then it's that finger and so on. 
and apparently that child remembered that pattern, that way of remembering the Lord is my shepherd all the way through his life. And now to a version of the prayer of St. Patrick. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three. I bind this day to me for ever by power of faith Christ's incarnation, his baptism in Jordan River, his death on cross for my salvation, his bursting from the spiced tomb, his riding up the heavenly way, his coming at the day of doom, I bind unto myself today. I bind unto myself today the power of God to hold and lead, his eye to watch, his might to stay, his ear to hearken to my need, the wisdom of my God to teach, his hand to guide, his shield to ward, the word of God to give me speech, his heavenly host to be my guard. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. I bind unto myself the name, the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three, of whom all nature hath creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word. Praise to the Lord of my salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. A reading from Romans chapter 8 that is being suggested for this day. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wonderful words of affirmation, of comfort and hope. Paul is persuaded there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God is in Christ Jesus our Lord and when we feel under attack in whatever way we can remember it is God that justifieth and it is Christ who maketh intercession for us we are protected beyond our imaginings if God be for us who can be against us may we pray that for one another and for our nation and for our commonwealth and for the royal family in these days. Instead of our usual prayers, these prayers again set for this season. Hear, O Lord, the prayers of your people as we remember before you His Royal Highness Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, and grant that we who confess your name on earth may with him be made perfect in the kingdom of your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with all who mourn, the members of the royal family, this nation, and all the nations of the Commonwealth, that, casting all our care on you, we may know the consolation of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Remember, O Lord, what thou hast wrought in us, and not what we deserve. And as thou hast called us to thy service, make us worthy of our calling, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer based on words of Sir Francis Drake, another great lover of the sea. O Lord God, when thou givest to thy servants to endeavour any great matter, grant us to know that it is not the beginning, but the continuing of the same, until it is thoroughly finished, which yieldeth the true glory. Through him who for the finishing of thy work laid down his life for us, even our Redeemer Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. And so may God bless us and keep us today and always, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And until we meet again, may God hold us in the palm of his hand. Amen.